10k followers, but not one has the key to your heart. I'm still lonely. I have no hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name's Shane, and I'm a recently qualified doctor and neuroscience supervisor at Oxford University. And today, I want to thank each and every one of you for helping this family grow to 10k. When I first started this channel, I didn't really have much of an expectation. I knew I was passionate about teaching, and I knew the best way to reach as many people as possible is through here. And your support over the last year has really, really humbled me. Now, people tell me every time you hit a milestone on YouTube, you have to do a Q&A. And I, for one, love a good tradition. So I've done the same. I asked you guys to send in your questions, and I'm going to answer as many of them as possible. Medic.quest asks, what is your favorite thing about being a doctor? So this is going to sound a bit cheesy, but honestly, my favorite thing is actually just talking to people and helping them out. It's the gratitude you get from patients when you tell them, oh, OK, this is what we think you have. This is how we've treated it. And now you're ready to go home. Everyone is so thankful for all your help. And it's just a very nice feeling when you've had a positive impact in someone's life. But it's not just the patients, you know, you talk to your colleagues. It's like a community. It's like a team. It's it's that team element, I would say, alongside the gratitude that I find most fulfilling. Because yeah, you have some horrible, horrible days. There's this thing called triple take that I had on my acute general medicine placement, which is where your firm or your team goes on take, where you take on new patients. And you have three sets of those starting from Friday evening, Saturday throughout the day, and Sunday taking on the patients that came in overnight. And those are 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. days, which often overrun, and some of those days I went home around 11 30 midnight but you know what it was actually fun and it was fine because I had such a good team that you know you could vent to they'd support you that element from from being a doctor is so great and that alongside the gratitude you get from patients and the ability to talk to people yeah being a doctor great loved it so far. best malology asks any advice or mistakes you see happen quite often that you think I should avoid? A common mistake that people make is thinking that they're not good enough to do anything. I think the reality is everyone is good enough to do everything. Take this for example. Let's say you work really hard for an exam. Unfortunately, it didn't go really well. Then you think, oh, okay, I'm not smart enough. That's why I don't do well in exams. When in reality, probably was the way that you were studying. You could still work hard and not study very effectively. And I think the immediate assumption that a lot of people have is, you know, questioning the people's intelligence or the inherent ability. When re really, you should be questioning the external things, you know, the things that you can change. Um, so yeah, I think I think that is probably the biggest mistake that people can make that ends up costing a lot of their passions and uh, several aspects of their future. Kanchik underscore eleven asks, how did you know that becoming a doctor is what you wanted? Um, to tell you the truth. Both my parents are doctors. Um, I've been surrounded by medicine and doctors as a result of that. So you might be expecting brown guy, doctors as parents, you were pushed into it. In fact, it was probably the other way around. My parents were kind of anti me going into medicine because they knew how stressful it was. They were kind of like, mm, there's not too much money in it. There's, you know, yeah, there's a lot of gratitude and job satisfaction, but you know, think carefully, see if you want to do something like law, etc. Um, but to be honest, I, really couldn't see myself in any other profession. I tried to put myself in other roles, you know, do you want to become a finance analyst? Do you want to become a lawyer? And I couldn't really see myself enjoying neither the process or the job. Whereas, you know, going and work experience, seeing doctors in action, in GP practices, in hospitals, you, you really get that sense of satisfaction. But to be honest, to some degree, it was influenced by my both my parents being doctors because you, I think you tend to gravitate towards things that you are kind of more familiar with. You kind of know exactly what the progression is going to be. You know, you do six years of medicine and your six years is planned out. So it's kind of lazy, you know, whereas if you do another course, you have to do three years and then you have to decide, do I do a master's? Do I go and find a job, etc. Whereas medicine for the next six years, you're sorted, you get into it, you do it. And then after that, you go into a job, foundation training, and then it's, you know, it's a set progression. It was, it was a known evil. So yeah, I, I did kind of know I wanted to be a doctor from early on, um, probably around GCSE time. It was kind of when I firmed it. And yeah, haven't haven't really looked back that much. I think from third year, uh, so going from preclinical to clinical, I saw a lot of my friends going into law, 
finance and you know hearing what they were going to be making in their first year second year etc and i was just like damn these people are making back and after another three years of studying i'm going to be earning probably a third of that it was a little bit like you know what like i i have a degree now i can go off and do what they're doing um and i seriously did talk about it with my parents but um i think speaking to my dad he was just like shane you know sure you can get a lot of money doing other jobs uh but you can you get a fair amount of money by being a doctor it's not going to be exceptional but it's, it'll be enough you'll have a happy life and more than that you will have the satisfaction and the gratitude and all of that together will make your job worthwhile and those elements you probably won't get in a job like you know something to do with finance etc and to be, that was a pretty monumental conversation because that i think you know helped me appreciate at the end of the day you want to be happy with what you're doing and you want to feel like you are actually making a difference a real difference you know you're not just making the richer richer um, but you're actually helping people who actually do need it and yeah i think putting everything into perspective really helped me appreciate you know what being a doctor is great aku underscore suro asks again how do you animate your videos and add cool effects? I'll link a few websites in the description below. Things like Envolto and Video Hive are very good websites to pick up. Kind of pre-made presets and plugins that you can very easily drop into different parts of the video. Honestly, the most useful video course you can take on this is the Skillshare class by Ali Abdal. Again, link in the video below. It's what I used when I first started out editing and it taught me so, so much. Very useful, very helpful. Check that out, lots of handy hits. Joy Mother asks, do you ever regret doing so much work because you miss out on normal stuff? I don't think I miss out on normal stuff. Um, I still get to spend time with my friends, I still get to spend time with my family, still get to go on holidays when they're a thing and you're allowed to. Um, yeah, like you have time to do stuff, um, you know, whether, you know, you have time to, you obviously have to make time to go to work and do your day job. And then making videos is fun, you enjoy it. There's time to do it, um, you know, I, I, with my current rotor, um, on anesthetics and ITU, I get one day off a week. So I, I work four days, four long days, but you know, I, I have that one day off. I can do some stuff there. And then I have the weekend as well. So there's plenty of time to, you know, follow your other passions, whether that's making videos and keeping up with fitness and going to the gym, etc. You know, it's it's about time management. It's about, it's about prioritizing the things that mean something to you. If you value something, you should make time for it. So, you know, if I value uh, making videos in order to help people and bring value to their lives, then I'll prioritize that, I'll make time for it. In the same way, you know, if I want to meet my friends, talk to them. If they mean that much to me, I will make time and I do. I don't think I miss out on stuff at all. In fact, I think doing this and everything else that I do creates more opportunity for me to do other things and meet more people, um, interact with them, learn more from them. I don't think I miss out on anything at all. In fact, it's probably the opposite. Hassan underscore X underscore five asks, what was the biggest challenge you faced at A-levels? Um, I'd say probably the biggest challenge was making sure the information that I had in my mind stayed there long enough till the exams. I think I pretty much covered everything, um, you know, fairly, with good time, I had, I had a lot of time until the exams and I think I'd gone over a pretty good amount of cycles, but I was still concerned that I wasn't gonna be ready or I was gonna forget stuff in the in the gap between me finishing of you know what I would say would be three or four cycles of that information and then the next exam. So the only way I could stop that from happening is, you know, space repetition. So I kept going over it over and over again and it got hella boring, but it was the best way to make sure that I felt confident that the information would stay with me and also probably the reality that the information actually did stay with me. Um, so yeah, that was that was my probably the biggest challenge. Andrew Zhu underscore asks, where do you get your hair cut from? Uh, I, I clearly don't. K.ZLN asks, I study psychology and I don't know how to learn correctly. How did you organize your days? Um, there's a, I made a video on that. Check this out, it might help you. But basically, the principles are take purposeful breaks, make sure you plan out your day, your week, and month in advance, make sure you minimize distractions, and all of that good stuff. Rohit underscore Madan asks, 
how did you get the Oxford job? If we're talking about the junior doctor job at Oxford University Hospitals, then you apply through a website called Oriel, you fill in what your preferences are, and then if your overall scores are high enough, you get into your first place positions, blah, blah, blah. And I was lucky enough to get into a pretty good hospital in Oxford, and yeah, I'm happy. But if we're talking about a tutoring or supervisor job at Oxford, I pretty much just emailed the loads of colleges, sent them my CV and a pretty great college called Harris Manchester College uh, reached out to me and they interviewed me and uh, got the job. Aku underscore Shrove asks, any tips on sleeping and waking up early? Um, be accountable, be disciplined. I probably was more of these things earlier on in my life than right now, to be honest. I'd say pretty much when I was at university, especially in the first three years, as well as probably around A-level time, I was pretty disciplined. Alarm would go off at 6.30 a.m. I would wake up at 6.30. That wasn't a period of snoozing, or there was a period of rolling around and looking at the phone before I wake up. I think what helped that system to work was that I knew I had a pretty busy day ahead way in advance. I you know, planned everything out. Um, again, this video explains that and I, knew, okay, I couldn't, I didn't have time to waste. And I knew I could only do this if I made sure I would work up at 6.30. And I had a payoff at the end of the day. Um, if, if I was at home, the evening, just before I would go to bed, would be reserved for a um, little bit of time with family and watching a movie. And the only way I could get to that point was making sure I woke up at 6.30, did everything I planned for the day, and I could have that reward at the end. And that's, you know, that's the best way to create motivation to make sure you stay disciplined and are accountable. That being said, life gets a little bit harder when you start a job. Uh, now, for example, my sleep pattern is pretty much controlled by my rotor. So if I need to be at work at 7.30 a.m., that means I have to wake up at 6.30 a.m. There isn't really any wiggle room. That is the latest I can wake up, get ready, get my meals ready in order to go to work. Um, you know, there is no, uh, let me snooze because the accountability is much more strict and much harsher because if you're late for work you probably aren't going to be liked very much. And then equally with sleep, especially when I was in acute general medicine, um, so that was my previous rotation, I didn't have much of a say on when I would finish, especially when we were on evening take. It could finish at midnight uh, and then you'd have to come back at 9 a.m. the next day. So you pretty much went home, had a shower, ate as quickly as possible and got to bed as quickly as possible. Um, it's become a little bit more tricky to make sure you have a pretty good routine. And then it has a knock-on effect because it spills over to your weekend and it ruins that. It means that you're more likely to sleep in on the weekend because you're like, oh, we won't get this opportunity uh, during the weekdays. So it's a bit trickier. Uh, when you're working, but it is possible. Probably the best video to help with this is, again, this one. 10K followers, but not one has the key to your heart. Um, yeah. Hear me out. Joe underscore Kumar underscore asks, what is your favorite productivity book? I'd say the book that probably made the biggest impact was GTD or Getting Things Done. It gives you very practical actions you can take. For example, one of the principles there is make sure every idea or every task that you have to do, put it in an in-tray as soon as it comes in and then sort it out later when you have time within that day, next day, etc. But make sure you always sort it out. Make sure you always review what you have to do at the end of the week. Principles like that were so actionable and it made sense. Let's say you have to get your research sorted out. Don't just write, get research sorted because it's not very actionable. Instead, write something like, email the research coordinator about the next project. Something like that is very actionable. And yeah, principles like that I got from that book. Really good book, getting things done. Highly recommend. Anyway, that's it for me for today. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.